Hello friends, welcome to Testing Shala YouTube channel. In this video, I'll be discussing about very basic thing which is how to write the test cases. I'll be discussing in detail about what are the way you should write the test cases, what are the precautionary measures you should take while writing your test cases in detail. So I'm going to discuss in detail about test case template what all the information you should fill in everything in this video so that before i proceed further to provide more details if you guys are not subscribed to testing shala youtube channel till now then please click on subscribe and bell icon so that all our future videos will be in your inbox as in when we publish our new videos so basically if you are talking about any test case writing the more most probably the templates would look like if i if you can see right the template will look like something like this so a, any test case template will have the first field on the top is could be a serial number then followed by a requirement number because this is very crucial requirement number or a use case number especially why we are using this requirement number or use case number it would be very useful for us to trace back to the requirements any test cases which we write any test cases which we write you should trace back to the requirement if if you are writing something test cases which is doesn't add any value for a given requirement then there is no benefit in writing any test cases hence we are the if we hence we add this column just to guarantee that whatever the test cases which we write after that it should be easily traceable or it is easily traceable we call it also call it, call it as a requirement traceability matrix so hence we added one column here requirement number or use case number then followed by requirement description requirement description here we have just given a login so login functionality basically this R1 is basically a login functionality. That, then now we are going to write a test cases for login functionality. That is all about we are going to talk about here. That is the first case T1. Then test case name. So here you should give a very valid meaningful name for any test cases. You should say test login. Let's say you are going to test user field. If you are going to test an user field, then you should say test login specifically user field. That is a field you are going to validate as part of uh, your testing. Then what is the preconditions? In order to precondition here is means let's say if you are talking about e-commerce application, Amazon or Flipkart, before uh, you you get a login page, the, your precondition here is your application should be up and running. Whenever you give Amazon.com or Amazon.in, then your application should pop up and you should see a user login page. That is a precondition here. You should see the precondition whether you find a home page or not, or you find a login page or not. That is a very precondition. That, that you should validate then what are the steps to reproduce basically in order to test a login functionality what are the steps you perform to come to the login page that is a thing you will be validating as part of your login page that is the step to reproduce you should give a step to reproduce in such a way that if anybody follows those steps you should be able to test anybody even let's say after some day if you are not there in that company, somebody has to execute your test cases, then your test cases, whatever you have written, you should be in detail enough. Anybody, if he follows blindly the steps, if somebody follows the steps very blindly, still you should be able to test without having any issues. That's how you should write a test cases. And also that's how you should review your test cases. If somebody seniors are going to review your test cases, then you should consider these things as well is somebody followed blindly whether they still can reproduce or whether still they someone can execute those test cases that's how you should write the test cases and also you should give for every test cases the priority of the test cases as well because if you write under test cases you, you won't be going to test all under test cases all the time because lot of resource constraints will be there lot of cost constraints will be there and we cannot go and execute all the 100 test cases because all 100 will have different priority 
Sometime we may only execute priority on test cases. Sometime we may execute only priority to test cases based on the need of the hour. Hence, it is always good to mention the priorities for a given test cases. And also the next column, which H column is, which is test data. This is very crucial uh, uh, information because in order to test any application in that matter, anything in that matter, you should have proper test data you should have in your test cases because you should have a predefined test data what kind of things you are going to test as part of your test cases you should have a right test data means here for a user login page you should have username passwords with different combinations all kinds of combination you should have a test data sometime what happens this test data is getting auto generated, especially the fields such as username and password. Automated tools will generate your randomly the username and password and you can test with the different combinations. Certain times human being has to create your own uh, username and password to test the user login page. At least you got an idea. Notice the automated way of creating a test data. What is the user way of creating a test data? Then the next column is uh, expected results because whenever we are going to write a test cases we will be writing a test cases based on your use cases or requirement because use cases or requirements they clearly call that out what actually should happen whenever you are trying to do this kind of operations that means it is already defined somewhere then your application should also behave in the same fashion that is called as a expected results that is the expected results where your application should behave. Are you getting it right? Your application should behave appropriately. That's where you are going to clearly define what is the expected result. Then actual result is whenever you are going to test this, whenever you are seeing totally different things. Let's say whenever I try to enter Amazon.com, I should get a home page. That is the expected results. Whenever if I enter Amazon dot in if it is directly going into the purchase page right where i've already ordered then that is incorrect because it should go to the home page all the time then your test cases status would become failed or passed based on the expected results and actual result because we are going to compare expected results versus actual results if something there is a mismatch is there in both these columns then we'll mark the test case as failed or pass are you getting it right then uh, while executing if something requires clarification or you wanted to put your notes as a tester you can definitely put into the comment section what is uh, uh, what are your comments while you're executing your test cases are you getting it right this is how the normal test case template would look like and how to write the test cases also I called out very clearly and you should be writing uh, your test case in a very simple and crisp manner. You should not make very complex because these test cases live very longer because the day you write test cases your job doesn't end after two months or three months. These test cases will go into the regression suit later in the day. As the uh, age of the product increases or your application increases, these test cases will continue to evolve and they kept it in the regression bucket or automation bucket to execute continuously. And uh, if the way you are writing test cases which is not appropriate, the way you are written test cases which is not appropriate, then after two months, someone has to rewrite or redo everything. Hence, you should always very cautious and you write in very simple and plain English, very simple and plain language. If somebody goes through it, somebody reads it, you should be able to understand very clearly and they should be able to understand, they're able to execute it, they should be able to review it very effectively without having any challenge. Are you getting it right? And uh, I have forgotten to tell one more thing here is, uh, even the requirements, use cases, test case number or test case names you should follow some naming conventions because by seeing that requirement number or requirement name or description anybody should be able to identify what is all about that requirement 
or what is all about that test cases you should define that some name some naming convention in your organization so that everybody adheres to that uh, uh, name because especially during logging a defect if if you are attaching these test cases then somebody sees what is test case is all about by seeing at the test case description itself they should get to know what is this test case is all about hence you should ensure that you maintain that consistency your naming convention effectively if you are maintaining that naming convention effectively then even if you write thousands of test cases by just going through one line of the test case name anybody should be able to identify what is all about your test cases that is very crucial because as a three months 10 months one year your test cases will go up to thousand two thousand five thousand then if somebody is just going through the test case name if they're not able to identify then it's very difficult because he has to go through each and every step to reproduce then it would be very time consuming at least i'm hoping uh, now you are able to visualize so how to write the test cases and when you are reviewing the test cases what all the things you should take care when you are reviewing the test cases how the overall test case uh, framework would like look like what are the factors you should consider when you are writing a test cases i am hoping you guys really enjoyed uh, this video and you are, you guys already understood what is all about test cases how to write test cases templates about test cases if you really enjoyed watching this video then please give a thumbs up to this video if you guys are not subscribed to testing chala youtube channel till now then please click on subscribe and bell icon so that all our future videos will be in your inbox as in when we publish our new videos thanks for watching this video bye for now take care